Looks like a new expansion's come out. Dawnbreak Night Edge has dropped. Unfortunately, I did spend a lot of the <laughs> past month preparing for and being in Japan. So I only get to open 51 booster packs today. Not a very exciting booster opening experience, but still exciting in that, you know, I love Shadowverse. I do kind of hope I get Moon here as an alternate leader. I definitely don't need the card. I already have a playset of her, but it would be nice to having the uh, alternate leader for uh, Haven. But anyway, let's see what we get. I'm not too worried. I have enough vials that I could craft 12 legendaries right now. So not having that many uh, rupees for boosters, not too much of an issue. But it does limit the odds I'm going to get one of those alternate leaders. I'm excited for the new portal craft cards though. And I do like some of the new runecraft stuff, although all of the decks I have right now are <laughs> no longer standard viable, rotation viable. So I have a lot of work we have to do, making new decks. Ooh, a gold. We probably won't spend too much time looking at the uh, silvers and the bronzes, but we will take a quick peek at the uh, golds and the legendaries we get. Also, I am jet lagged so hard. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Not gonna be all mumbly. Force the Dragon Newt. Alright, we are replacing a lot of spells and cars that are leaving rotation, so... Stuff like that's expected. Destroy an enemy follow with two defense for less. Draw a card and evolve early followers play. Spell boost, destroy a follower with one or more defense. Hmm, so I'm guessing a spell boost here. One, more defense and what one or more oh my god I'm so tired anyway this remains a three cost but the size of the menu can destroy goes up so that's interesting wish there was some music during the pack opening scene oh there we go Animated gift for the bloodkin. Ah, Vania. But a Dragoncraft legendary, huh? If you played at least ten other non-follower cards this match, and you have ten play points, choose play this as a virtuous lindworm or an iniquitous lindworm. <clears throat> oh my. 10 10 restores 5 draws 5 so that's that's virtuous i like that a lot oh it's a 10 10 storm that ignores ward so kind of a king elephant that's a good turn 10 finisher right there you only have to do 8 damage by turn 10 if you have an evolve point not bad, Linworm. Maybe this is the expansion I finally start playing with uh, Dragoncraft. Now, of course, a ramp, it doesn't need to be a turn 10 play. That could be a turn 7 finisher if you've uh, ramped well. <clears throat> Dragon Cleaver Roy. I love their dumb names. Gain empty play point. Alright, so we can gain ramp through this guy. Interesting. So you do extra damage in mirror matches. What a what a neat idea. Alright, there's our Linworm. Whoops. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh no.
All right, let's finish our our ticket based boosters before we start spending our rupees. I do like the day night dichotomy theme we're going with here and the choosing of options. I think that's pretty fun. Isn't this already a card? Someone looking? Are we reprinting cards now? Just straight up? I have to check. I mean, I'm like almost 100% sure Summon Bloodkin is already a card. So that's kind of like an alternate art situation or a reprint. I mean, Magic does it all the time, so it's not weird. I guess it's weird because it's a digital card game. Whenever an allied forest back comes in play, give a plus one, plus zero, and storm. Hmm. Sounds like Aggro Bat is going to come back. A lot of animated cards, always nice. Although I'm one of those heathens that will turn all of the animated cards into vials. So we got an ambush, enhance of eight. Gain plus three plus three, so it'll be a four six, and put a non just silent maid into your hand and make it a zero. Two three ward. With Bane if you have a commander. This is a commander. It's not bad. <clears throat> you gave yourself a little wall to hide behind. Alright, another one of her. But a snowman king. I do like the Snowman King. So every time you spell boost, you either spawn more 2-2 two -two wards or more 1-3 uh, storms. I did play with a few of these cards already because I did a uh, did an arena run. Ever Dark Sticks. Strix. Put a random Shadowcraft follower from your deck in your hand. Whenever you perform a burial rite, restore one defense to your leader. Alright. Nothing to do with neutral, which is odd considering the other print of uh, Strix. Gift for Bloodkin we've already seen. Chromatic Duel. So we either got a White Queen or a Black Queen. Ooh, and we could recover six play points if we play it on turn six. Making this a free play. Jeez. Wait a minute. So this could be a turn one, or it could be a turn six but cost zero. That's interesting. It's a weird way to do it, but... Anyway. You get a four play point commander, who's a three three with rush, and whenever it attacks, you summon a knight. Or get a four play point three four commander. All ally followers can't be damaged until the end of your opponent's turn. That's pretty good. Gives all of your units immunity to damage. I imagine spells that uh, banish or destroy would still work, but damage would not. Nice, chromatic duel. Jeweled Priestess, what are you? Oh god, Tartman is so creepy. Ugh. Put either a white diamond or a black diamond into your hand. White diamond is a one play point haven amulet. Draws two cards. Black Diamond. Deal two damage to the enemy leader. Restore two defense to your leader. Alright. Two fairly useful amulets. Next. Looking for those big legendaries here, guys. Come on. Victoria. 3-1 Rush, whenever this follower attacks an enemy follower, deal X damage to the follower before it can deal any damage in return. X equals this follower's attack. 
All right, first strike, not bad. So in a holy shield line. This could be really annoying. All right, 10 more, let's go. Let that alternate leader, come on. Took me ages to get, uh, get Cerberus. Dragon Cleaver Roy, we've already taken a peek at him. Another snowman. Nothing exciting. Oh, double legendary. That's what we're looking for. God Sworn Alexiel, Havencraft. Give your leader the following effect. If an allied amulet is in play, your leader cannot take more than four damage at a time. Eh? <laughs> and last the rest of the match. So this is basically, um... Durandel, I want to call it. I'm terrible with names, but the... The swordcraft amulets that prevents you from taking more than four damage at a time. This just... Anytime you have any amulet play, which for Havencraft, easy to do. So that's kind of neat. I mean, the stats aren't great, but the effect is pretty good. Marduk. Neutral. Give your leader the following effects. Followers can't be played. Whenever you play a spell, draw a card. Whenever you play an amulet, deal two damage to the enemy leader. These effects last until this follower leaves the area. Interesting. Interesting. I like that. Can't play followers, but every spell is cycle and every amulet does damage. You could probably do some interesting stuff with that. Of course, once it's dead, it's, the effect goes away. Alright, I'm kind of excited to see what people do with that. For seven, not too much is going to happen, but if it stays alive for just one turn, the next turn could be a pretty powerful turn. We've already seen one of these. Again, Tartman's really creepy. I get it. I'll make an aggro bat deck. Calm down. Jeez, aggro bat in Unlimited is going to be quite the experience, huh? Alright, 20 more to go. Hoping for some more double legendary packs like we just saw. Of course, I said that out loud, so now it's not gonna happen. Oh my god, gift for the blood can calm down. Deal one damage to all enemies, or two damage instead. It's the silver and bronze only boosters that make you feel pain on the inside. Like I get it. Come on, give me give me a gold at least. Oh, come on. More legendaries? Nope, just animated cards. There we go. <coughs> Paradise Vanguard. Wow. 
That's a gold. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2. Evolved is a 4-4, four, four, and it banishes an enemy follower with 1 defense. Jeez. Not, not that great, Paradise Vanguard. This is shaping up to be the most disappointing 10-pack. Oh, thank you. Alright, that kind of turned things around. Another Havencraft. If at least two allied amulets are in play, and you have at least five play points, choose. Play this as either a... Serenian Hind of Light. Light Hind or Dark Hind. Light Hind. 3-5 Rush, end your turn, restore 4 defense to this follower. Alright. So like a less good version of Moon there. Dark Hind. Subtract 2 from the countdown of all allied amulets. And it has Bane. Alright, it's not great. It's not terrible. And of course, if I don't end up using it, that's that's rupees at the very least. So, like I said, don't have that many boosters to open, but I do have a lot of vials to spend. Well, here's hoping for more legendaries, specifically an alternate leader. I'll take hinterland ghoul though. Shadowcraft. Put 10 skeletons in your hand. At the end of your turn, deal 6 damage to all enemies if you have at least 30 shadows. Alright, so we're kind of looking at like a Path to Purgatory, but as a minion. Which is a little bit not perfect. I mean, we are... It's removable. Path to Purgatory, you need to use Amulet Removal, which not everyone runs. Put 10 skeletons in your hand. So off the bat... You're generating shadows, because not all these skeletons are going to make it into your hand. You know... Or at least you could play its turn 7, so... In most matches, you've already seen your opponent and yourself use up those evolution points. Or you're about to use up those evolution points. You could probably be pretty close to 30 shadows if you're playing the right kind of deck. The 10 Skeletons is definitely going to push you over. And this will be a board clear. So unless they have direct removal, this is actually not that bad. I mean, in take two, this will be really good, I imagine. Since uh, removal is kind of a premium in there. I like you, Hinterland Ghoul. I don't know if you're great for, for constructed play, but I hope you will be. Because I love Path to Purgatory. Now loading. Okami. When you play another follower, give it Storm, then return this follower to your hand. That's interesting. It's kind of a five cost spell, almost, to give a minion Storm. I could see this being fun. <laughs> Junk. Stuttengar. Banish an enemy amulet, give gain plus three plus three instead if there are no enemy amulets in play. Alright, so on turn six, this gets rid of an amulet, or on turn six, you're playing this as a six five. Which isn't great stats, but it's not terrible stats. Fortunately for you, you're animated, so that's just vials. Oh, yes! Argus, this is what I wanted. Puppet girl. Because I really do want to make a puppet deck that isn't a Path to Purgatory deck. And I think this is one of the ways we're going to do it. And getting one of these is great, because now I just have to craft two more. 
Anyway. If you have two puppets in your hand and eight play points, you get to choose what this becomes. It's either Resolute Puppet or Vengeful Puppet. Resolute Puppet. So. Whenever an ally puppet comes to play, transform it into a Lloyd the Android. If there isn't an allied Lloyd the Android in play, at the end of your turn, restore three defense to your leader if there's an allied Lloyd the Android in play. So Lloyd the Android is a 1-4 ward. And it, it gives all of your other Ooh. <sighs> basically they have to kill this before they attack um, other stuff with spells so that's fun it's a nice weird ward that protects your other minions and it heals you if they don't get rid of them but I'm more interested in Vengeful Puppet again I'm super jet lagged so I'm gonna be yawny and mumbly apologies Whenever an ally puppet comes into play, transform it into an Uno. If you have an Uno in play, get a Do. If you have a Do in play, and an Uno in play, you get a Tre. An Uno is a 1-1 one -one with Ambush. A Do is a 3-2 with Storm. So an easy combination, because one of them's hidden. And those two merge together into a Tre. Which is a 3-3 with Storm that can attack twice. Per turn, and if it dies, it summons an Uno and a Duo. Just kind of recreating itself over and over again, unless your opponent has a lot of removal ready. So I'm really excited for this. I think both forms are pretty fun and viable. <clears throat> and it's a helpful way of making Puppet into an actual archetype, which I'm excited for. So hell yeah, Orcus. Oh, more legendaries. Oh, this really makes up for last time where I opened like 80 booster packs and got like two legendaries. <coughs> A new Vania. If you have at least six play points and vengeance active, choose play this as Kind Queen or Blood Queen. Alright, so Kind Queen. 3 6 drain. Summon a forest bat. Whenever an allied forest bat comes into play, give it a ward. And then Blood Queen is a 3-6 with Storm. Summons a forest bat. Whenever an allied forest bat comes into play, give it Bane. Pretty fun. I just like Vania a lot, so I'm excited for new Vania. And again, I mean... Aggro Bat seems to be coming back with some of these cards. Oh, oh man, so many legendaries! Alright, so we already have one of these. Now we have two Godsworn Alexials. Gentle Warmth or Passionate Warmth? Gentle Warmth. Return an Elite Follower or Amulet to your hand. Passionate Warmth. Deal one damage to an enemy follower. Well. One of those seems better than the other. I wish you could see the artwork for the other versions, because they all have art. All right. <laughs> Jeez, we got a lot of legendaries. That wasn't bad for just 51 booster packs. Wait, wait. Come on, brain. I just want to sort. God. Legendaries. From Dawnbreak. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 legendaries in 50 packs. That's... Better than the average drop rate, if I understand correctly, so that's not bad at all. And now what legendaries are we missing? Quite a few, quite a few. Change your leader's maximum defense to 10, give your leader the following effect, and you turn to 5 damage to a random enemy follower. If no enemy followers are in play, do you find the enemy leader instead? This is a weird, like, vengeance... Dragon craft situation here. Hmm. 
It's maximum defense too, so you couldn't heal up from there. I don't think this effect is good enough to warrant limiting your health to 10. Oh, it lasts for the rest of the match. Alright, no, that, never mind. That's fine. That's 5 damage to a minion on the board, and if they have no minions, face. And it's at the end of your turn, so you can spend your turn removing minions. Alright, I could see that being pretty fun. I do want Unbodied Witch. This is a super creepy card, and I think you could do a lot of fun things with it. Choose a card in your hand, put copies of it in your hand until it's full, so you're gonna have a nine copies at max. Well, I guess, yeah, nine copies max if you just have two cards in your hand. At the start of your turn, evolve this follower. Whenever this follower attacks, spell boost the cards in your hand ten times. So an unlimited, this could be real busted. In rotation, it could still probably be real busted. Give an ally follower plus three plus four. If it's an officer follower, give it ward. If it's a commander follower, give it clash. Alright, so stat dump onto another card. That which erases. Whenever a card is put into your deck, banish a random enemy follower or amulet. Jeez. This with uh, the one cost amulet that does two at the end of every turn. So you could play this on turn eight, play that amulet, and then there go two enemy followers or amulets. Doesn't matter how big they are, or if they're in, in ambush mode. So that's pretty neat. Dark Feast Bat. Deal X damage to an enemy, X equals the number of times that your leader was damaged during your turn this match. Jeez, if you make a deck that's a lot of uh, self-damage and healing, you could potentially do a lot of damage to face with this, because just as an enemy, it doesn't have to be a minion. Or, of course, it's just good removal. Yadrazel. Put either a Blessing of Creation or a Wrath of Nature. Draw two cards. Add two to the number of cards played this turn. Pretty fun, especially unlimited. This with Roach should be pretty broken. Then give all LA followers Storm. Boy. That could be pretty fun. Because you could just pocket that until you're ready. If this follower's attack or defense is increased by a spell or effect during your turn, evolve this follower. And then it, it's a 5-5 Storm and Ward as opposed to a 5-5 Just Ward. Interesting. So you could play this, boost its stats, and then just go face with it. It's not bad. Saradwin, you're back. Eternal Totion or Instant Potion. Yet if it attacks, you recover a play point. So Instant Potion. Oh, Eternal Potion. Reanimate 10 for 5. Gah. I'm glad I'm going to see a lot more Zeus's and Unlimited. I'm not glad. That was sarcasm. Instant Potion. One play point, Shadowcraft spell, deal two damage to an enemy follower. Barrier Light, deal five damage instead. So really, Eternal Potion. Every single time. And every single time, the answer is going to be Zeus. I hate you. Rooney Destiny's Bard. Prophecy of Boons or Prophecy of Doom into your hand. Whenever this follower attacks, spell boost the cards in your hand. Alright, Prophecy of Boons. If this card has been spell boosted at least five times, recover two play points, draw two cards. Hmm. So if you spell boost this five times, it's a free cost to play. Prophecy of Doom, 15 play point runecraft spell. Give the enemy leader the following effect at the end of your turn. Deal 7 damage to your leader. <laughs> spell boost, remove 1. Oh man! Prophecy of Doom! Oh man! Prophecy of Doom... Combined with Unbodied Witch. You would have... Upwards of nine copies of a five cost spell that would 
give the enemy deal 7 damage to yourself at the end of your turn. So on turn 10, you can play 2 of those, that's 14 damage. Boy, I kind of want both of you. Alright. Celia Hope's Strategist, or Celia Despair's Messenger. Summon a Shield Guardian and a Heavy Knight. Meh. Storm. Gain plus one for each other allied follower in play, then return all other allied followers to your hand. Alright, that's... I cost two, so for that cost and that effect, I could see why it's a legendary, but... That could have been one more and a gold. Moon and Sun. Alright, these are the themes. Like, this is, this is uh, the art for the expansion. So... Three cost spell. Summon either an Amatasaru or a Tsukiyomi. My pronunciation of Japanese is great, and I've been there twice. Enhance of seven, give that follower plus three plus three. Alright. So we have a two two, possibly a five five. Restore one defense to your leader. Last words put a moon and sun into your Oh. So you just have these forever, because every time they die, you're getting a moon and sun in your hand, huh? That's fun. So a 3-1 with a clash of deal 1 damage to the enemy leader. So it's either you restore during a clash, or you deal damage during a clash. I mean, it's a spell, and it's a spell you just have forever, and it's neutral, and it's not that bad. It's a pretty cheap one. You could do some fun stuff with that, especially in a RuneCraft deck. Alright. Thanks for joining me for this pack opening, and subsequent looking at all the legendaries in this expansion. It's important for me, because as you can see, I have a decent number of vials here. I need to choose what I want to create. I'm looking at un Unbodied Witch here, Rooney, Destiny's Bard. Those two are pretty high up. I need two more copies of Orcus over here. That's definitely happening. And after that, I'm not so sure. I might get two more Vanias, because I kind of like that. I might go for two more Linworms. Because I think you could do some fun Dragoncraft stuff with that. Yeah. And if I need more dust, I can make more dust. And by dust, I mean vials. Stupid games and their special words. Anyway. Stay tuned, because you know I'm going to make some dumb decks with these cards, and those will be popping up in the bonus slots, 9pm, random days. Keep your eyes open. And look forward to, uh, in probably less than a week, a pack opening for uh, Hearthstone, where I'll be opening, I think, 80 packs in there? That sounds about right. Somewhere in the range of 80 booster packs for the next uh, Hearthstone expansion. Anyway, bye. Oh my god, I'm so tired. Jet lag's the worst.